Alright, hi guys. First lab, uh, first video of optical cavity. My name is Paris. Probably haven't met at this stage. So optical cavity, let's just do a little bit of the theory of overview, right? So you've got the manual, you, it might be really confusing at this stage, you haven't done any optics before. Let's just talk a little bit about it. So what's an optical cavity? It's essentially two mirrors. That was an awful mirror. Two mirrors, again, take two. All right, that's better. All right, two mirrors, curved mirrors, okay? So you have light coming in, da, da, da. Now you've done like some optics in first year, Right, you want the light to essentially bounce back and forward a lot. Both of these are very reflective. So we say uh, 0.99 or you know 99% reflective, something like that. Um, so it traps a lot of the light. So only 1% comes in, but of that 1%, you don't lose any, and it keeps building up and building up. All right, that's the idea. But you have interference effects. Okay, so you know about interference. Probably know if this is L, then uh, if the length equals an integer number of half the wavelengths, then you get a standing wave, right? And then you can get a standing wave, of, a standing wave of a higher order. So uh, this is a longer wavelength, lower frequency. This is a higher wavelength, higher frequency. So that's what we're dealing with today. That's an optical cavity. I think there was a tiny bit of that in first year. I don't know if I'm too close to the camera, I actually haven't seen, so it's too late now. Um, so this is still relevant, but it, in reality it's a bit more complicated, okay? So let's talk a little bit now. Well, let's first say, say I just put in my light, okay? Laser beam. Laser beam has a frequency. So now, I'm going to look at a plot. Frequency axis and say intensity. So I'm measuring some light comes through the back and I pick that up with a photo detector. Alright, that's my photo detector. So I'm measuring how much light's coming out. So I expect that when this is resonant, when this is the right frequency, I get a standing wave. Right? There's no there's only constructive interference and I get an increase in transmission. Right? So then I see this. So I'm sweeping the laser frequency, right, I'm changing my laser frequency. Now, when I get to a transmission, a um, resonance, I see this. Yeah? It's pretty self-explanatory. This is a Lorentzian peak. This is, uh, you know, uh, so we're measuring the intensity. When run resonance, we get a lot more intensity out. Or, or equivalent intensity inside, right? Same thing. So then as we keep increasing, we get to the higher order, the next highest order mode, and we get another peak there, right? And then the next highest one, there, equal spacing. That's called the free spectral range, all right? That's the frequency spacing of all these um, next order, longitudinal order mode, all right? So it's important that we specify longitudinal order. So this is equal to C on 2L. Okay? Um, so you can see that you know, 2L over C is the round trip time. That's how long it takes a light to go there and back. And this is like the frequency of that. So it's just one over. It's one over that. So it's the frequency corresponding to the round trip time. Okay? Um, but equivalently, you know, you can derive this from this. This makes more intuitive sense. You can get to here from that. All right. Very easily, in fact. So this is n lambda on two. So this is n. Um, f equals wave equation. F equals c lambda. No, C equals, yeah, I think that was right. 
about t equals f on lambda. Meters per second. C is some integer number of free special ranges. Yeah. So I'm saying it like it's obvious, but the math is easy, but I know you haven't seen it before. So but it is pretty simple, I guess. You still might be confused, that's alright. Alright, so we'll keep this diagram there because we're gonna uh, refer to it a bit. So in reality, it's not just a little plane wave, okay? It's not, it's not a plane wave that, you know, all propagates in a uniform manner, you know, across all the cross section of the beam. It doesn't just, this big plane that moves across like this, it actually has some three-dimensional intensity distribution. So if you solve uh, Maxwell's equa equations in free space to try and find out what those intensi intensity distributions are, you come up with these cross-sectional solutions which are called Hermite, Hermite, I think it's Hermite, I'm actually not sure. Hermite polynomials and Laguerre polynomials. And they tell you, so you solve Maxwell's equations uh, in conjunction with the wave equation, you come up with these, you make some approximations and you come up with these. Um, Hermes Laguerre, and these, the shapes, the cross-sectional shapes, so this is the first order one for both. It's just like a spot. The next one is like this. Let me check, you can actually see what I'm writing. Looks like it, yep. So that's the next one, and then you know you've got a third order. The Hermes ones have rectangular symmetry. Can't draw a rectangle around them. Um, they, they look kind of boring. The Laguerre ones have cylindrical symmetry. They look pretty cool. So the next order one for Laguerre is like a donut. And then you've got like a ring and a donut. And then you've got like a ring, but you've got some off-center intensity peaks. So you've got both of these modes that can exist when you're looking at the beam coming towards you. That's how the intensity is distributed. All right. So we want a spot. A spot is the Gaussian mode. That's the simplest one, right? So we already know that its intensity distribution as a function of its radius, moving away from the middle, is a Gaussian. That's why it's called a Gaussian, because its intensity or electric field, uh, they're both Gaussian functions. The intensity is just the electric field squared. Um, so this is what we want. So in, rea in reality, this sort of has a, if I've got my laser back here, this shoots out a beam that's going to kind of expand. Gaussian beams expand in free space as they propagate. They don't, they're not just planes. They've got a radius of curvature. So this, at any point, I can draw a tangent and measure how curved this is. Sorry, not a tangent, a circle. So I like, as this is curved, I just like draw a circle. With a, at this point, you could draw a tangent and um, that would go between both the curve and the circle. So like here, it's also going to raise the curvature and then it's the radius of that circle that defines its radius of curvature. So if it's really curving like that, sorry, if it's really curving like this, like really steep, it's going to be a tiny little circle. If it's a slow curve, you're going to get a huge circle with a really big radius. So radius of curvature is the measure of how curved something is, and it's called radius because it's related to a circle drawn tangent to that point. Okay? So the radius of curvature of every point of this beam. So this beam is expanding, and then we need a lens to focus it, and then it comes into our cavity, like that. Alright? 
that's essentially what we're doing. Why do we need this lens? Because if our beam is huge, um, it's not going to couple well to our cavity mode. So in reality, our cavity, I should have started here, our cavity has a predefined mode. The Gaussian mode looks something like that. So at any point here, cross section, I've got a spot. There I've got a big spot, here I've got a smaller spot. Because the beam has just been focused, but it's the same intensity distribution, just a smaller one, or a bigger one. Okay, so based on the radius of curvature of the mirror, matching the Gaussian beam radius of curvature, that defines what kind of, uh, what shape mode the cavity can host, okay? Um, so, so, like for example, a mirror that's really curved, all right, might focus a beam that's much, much smaller. All right, it's still a Gaussian beam, but it's just the waist size here. The point where the Gaussian beam focuses to the minimum size is called the waist, right? So based on these radii of curvature, I've got a certain Gaussian mode that I can host. I can also excite other modes, like the second order one. And you'll see that we have those. We don't want to couple to them, but they can exist inside our cavity, okay? But we're only concerned with the Gaussian, the first order. Sorry, the lowest order, zeroth order. Um, so we need to make sure that our beam that's coming in from the laser overlaps well with the mode that can exist inside the cavity. Because if it's way too big, then it's not going to couple to what our cavity is designed to host, right? We'd need a bigger cavity, a different shape cavity for a bigger beam, okay? Um, so I've only really talked about rays of curvature. There's also probably the intuitive thing that you've already realized is that the spot size, we, we denote that by omega, and that changes as it propagates. So the propagation direction is the z direction. It's propagating this way, z. As it propagates, it expands. So omega z, as a function of z, is increasing. The formula for that's in your book, in your manual. So as I was saying, like this is the waist here, sorry, this is the spot size, omega, here. It's bigger, here's the spot size in the centre, it's smaller, all right? In fact, here, this is omega naught, which is the minimum of the spot size. That's the waist where it's focused, that's the smallest point, okay? So we've got a waist from our laser, somewhere in here. That's whatever the waist size is. It comes out, um, but it's going to get too big, likely, unless we put it in you know, exactly the right spot. It needs to be focused. So I've got a lens with a focal length, f, 300 millimeters. That's the lens that we've got, 300 millimeter focal length lens. And then we need to work out where do we put it, D1, and then where do we put the cavity, D2, sorry, all the way to the waist. That's D2. So that this, we're going to get, you know, a lens maybe it has to go here so that this gets really big and then it overlaps perfectly with our cavity mode, all right? That's what we're doing. So what we've got to do is find out what is the laser waste, right? What, what's the input beam? We've got to know what our input beam is if we want to manipulate it to some output. And then we've got to know where are we going to put this lens to focus it to our cavity mode? And the other thing that we've got to know is what, our, what is our cavity mode? So that's what you're sort of finding out. One, laser waste. Two, um, this diagram goes so ugly. So one, laser waste. Two, cavity mode. That's really easy. That's just some quick calculations. Three, um, lens position. And then what we do is we're going to excite the optical cavity and measure its transmission. We've got this, and this is this is what we'll see, right? If we've got good coupling, we'll see our zero, zero mode. So this is zero, zero. But because our cavity won't be op like ideally aligned, it's also going to couple to some of these higher order modes. You're going to get in between 
the same pattern of higher order modes. So this one might be you know, 0, 1 Hermite Gaussian. They're all the same. And then you might get like a Laguerre Gaussian 0, 1. Okay. That's what we're going to see. So I'll just, I'm not going to make another, I think this is, I actually made the videos backwards, so this is actually the last video I made. Um, so let's go in here. This is our ladder experiment. This is the laser Faraday isolator to stop light coming back into the laser cavity and destabilizing it. Polarizer for attenuating some of the intensity if we want. Mirrors. Here's our 300 millimeter lens. And here's our cavity. So this is the input mirror, this is the end mirror, it's in here, and it's in a housing to just stop dust and stuff flowing between and ruining your own cavity uh, finesse. So this is going to go on the table, so we'll do this. This is a piezo drive, so we can sweep the cavity length, thereby changing its resonant frequency. And what that does is essentially like sweeping through that um, transmission map from before. So this on the frequency domain, if I'm changing the length, changing where this mirror is, then what I'm essentially doing is I'm making, and my laser, sorry, my laser is approximately a fixed frequency, then I'm changing my cavity length, so all of these modes are just sweeping, zip, zip, zip all together, and if I'm monitoring this with say a camera, like a CCD camera, that says CCD, so I'm looking at the camera, then what I'm going to see is when it passes here on my output, my TV monitor, I'm going to see that. And then when this one comes through, I'm going to see that. You know, the mode shape. And then when this one comes through, I'm going to see that one's mode shape. If I'm looking with a camera, not a photo detector. Um, so then, yeah, it gives me an idea of what modes I've got and what shapes they are. So these are just all zipping through. All right, that's pretty much everything. Um, yeah. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about how we measure the laser waste, right? It's essentially measuring the size of the beam here, 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 out of your laser. You measure those sizes, spot sizes, and then you have a omega z because you measured it versus z and you plot them and you fit that right and then you find you know this spot where the um, waste size is and its location so that's what we got to find where's the waste how big is it you know because it might be here in the laser or it might be there or further back we don't know it yet we got to know that before we can have D1 um, yeah so we're gonna and at each point here, to measure the spot size, omega of Z1, we've got to take the beam, and we're essentially blocking it with a knife edge. And we sweep the knife edge across, like that. So at this point, you know, I've blocked out half. At this point, I've blocked over like 90% of the beam. And then we plot that as a function of position that we're blocking, X, and the intensity on the photo detector and you know, if I'm going this way, what am I going to see? Initially I've got all the light on the detector because I'm not blocking any, but then I start blocking it, I go zip, something like that, okay? That's all in the um, manual. All right, hopefully that's kind of clear. We've got Zoom meetings, you can talk to me. Um, I'll see you in Zoom.